As you comfortably take your seat, tell your neighbor to the left and to the right, I trust that the God of heaven will work things out in your favor. Say, I'm conscious of this one thing that God cannot fail. And I'm sure God won't fail you this week. Now, something happened in Exodus 17. <clears throat> the Bible gave us an understanding it was a battle between Israel and the Amalekites. Praise the Lord. Between Israel and the Amalekites. The Bible says that in verse 8, it said, Now Amalek came and fought with Israel in Raphidim. And Moses said to Joshua, Choose all some men, Joshua, according to your discretion, and go out, fight with Amalek. The Amalek came as a host, as a nation. But Moses said, one of his sons, choose some men, just some men. And you guys go fight. And the Bible says, said, Moses said, for tomorrow you will fight, but I will stand on top of the hill with the rod of God. I will stand, the rod of God talks about the word of God. I will make sure to stand and begin to tell God his word. I'll begin to tell God, this is who you are, oh God. This is who you are. Victory is in your hand. Oh God, you are the lifter of our head. You will not allow Israel to become a wasteland. I will stand on the hill with the rod. Joshua, as long as I'm standing and I'm speaking the word, anything you do will answer. Anything you say will yield result. As long as as I stand. And the Bible says that and so Joshua did as Moses said to him verse 10 and fought to the top of the hill and so it was when Moses held up his hand he held up his hand and was talking to God speaking to God. The Bible says Israel prevailed. In this service, my hands are up before the Lord. And I'm speaking in the name of Jesus. You will prevail. In every battle, you will prevail. The chapter of grace and glory will be made manifest on your life. I'm speaking God's word. Speaking God's word. Speaking God's word. On every side, in the name of Jesus, you will sing good song. Amen. By the word of the Lord, what you have been long waiting for, God of heaven will give it to you. Amen. What you have been long waiting for, the God of heaven will deliver it in your hand. Amen. I pray for you from my heart, standing before God, lifting my hands to God. I decree in the name of Jesus what you are looking for God will give it to you again God will fight your battle again God will fight your battle see them so the Bible says they prevail and when he let down his hand the Bible says the Amalek prevail he said but Moses and became heavy Moses and became said so they took some stones put it under him and sat on it and Aaron and all supported his hand the support for the hand this morning is your heart in agreement with the word of god is someone following me right now is your heart in agreement with the word of god don't let your heart entertain buying and selling let your heart see Christ doing it. 
Let your heart see Christ giving the victory. Let your heart see Christ working it all out. Don't be calculative or be analytical. No. Your brain sense, head sense won't do it. But when God gets involved, when God, if God put his such light on you, everybody will see you. Good news will see you. Breakthrough will see you. You are no longer hid. The best is made manifest. And you are assessing the fullness of his grace. May your life have meaning this week. Uh, I like this amen. May your life have meaning this week. Your glory will not be hidden. In the name of Jesus. Somebody say I believe God. That everything is working now. Somebody say I believe God. That everything is working now. It's been a great month of God's revival. And we spoke about the outpouring of the Spirit, which is understanding God's revival. And then we saw understanding, review glory as the outcome of God's revival. When you understand that review glory is a gift when revival is ignited, you begin to enjoy the glory of God. We also saw that revival is yielding absolutely to God in everything for a desire answer. Yielding absolutely to God in everything for a desire answer. Until you can say that you have submit totally to God you can truly experience a revival. And then we saw that glory differs. There's a glory of the star. There's glory of the star. But the right glory is what is on you. And the Bible calls it the glory of the Lord. Someone say, I carry, I carry God's glory. You will need to look for God to steal the glory. Uh -huh. So may I carry the glory of God. It will speak on me <clears throat> forever and ever. And the last statement I remember saying in the course of the teaching was to tell you that reveal glory is salvation enforced. Salvation is the act of being saved, getting saved, and staying saved by all means. By all means. You might not know seven mountains. You might not know 77 prophets with seven days and seven hours of prayer. You don't need all of that. Just make sure you are safe. That is, you have found Christ. You know, we grow up singing the song. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. No pastor is the way. No prophet is the way. They are just an extension of God. The voice of God. Hallelujah. So, to know Him is to be saved. To find Him is to stay safe. You know Him, or you must find Him. Oh, do you know the prophet, president of that? This year, I know Him. And uh, you find Him to initiate a relationship. And then you grow up, stay beside Him. Then you can say, Now I'm safe. I'm saying. The reason why he talks about the righteous, he calls him the righteous. He said the righteous fall seven times. Even with the fall, he is addressed as the righteous. It's because he stays under a covering. If he mess up, we will carry him a little, embrace him back, and show him the way of light. Hallelujah. 
your true safety is in Christ. Your family safety is in Christ. The safety of your home and business is in Christ. This jaw and bright face that you brought to church today is in Christ. The intention of the enemy is to have killed you. But you are still standing. Say devil. Say devil. Uh I'm still alive. Full of strength in Christ Jesus. So it's going to be a new dimension this morning. I'm going to show you how to what I'm going to show you what keeps you in a revival. What keeps you in a revival? Abacock, the AMPC Abacock 3 and verse 2. The Bible gave us an understanding that we have heard of the reports of God. Ah, we saw the mighty things you did. Even fear catch us. And I was afraid, oh Lord. Ah, you just revive people. Then revive, oh God, your work in the midst of the year. In the meek midst of the year. Make yourself known. Lord, even in judgment and in wrath, I'm asking you, Lord, Endlessly, endlessly. Remember love? Ah! The love that was sacrificed of the blood of your son. Remember it. And remember pity. Remember pity. If you can't find any reason, pity me. Lord, just pity me. I don't have anyone. I don't have a backbone. I don't have support. I don't have everything failed to the left and to the right. Just pity me. <laughs> and they say, Lord, remember mercy. So what keeps you in a revival? Number one, right thoughts. Right thoughts. Right thoughts are winning thoughts. Right thoughts are winning thoughts. These are the thoughts that helps you to win in life. The Bible speaking that for as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Proverbs 23 and verse 7. As a man thinks in his heart, so he is. So the Bible gave us a sign. Say, "Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind." Romans twelve, from verse one to two. Work on your thoughts. The Bible says, "Thou shalt have whatsoever you say." Your thoughts. Is what delivers your speech. And you become what you say. What are you thinking? As a man think in his heart, so is he. Are you seeing evil that you are thinking evil? A thousand shall fall full of evil. Ten thousand shall be full of evil. He said, it will not come near me. Why? There is a right thought engaging. He said, when men say, there is a casting down, I will say, there is a lifting up. He said, I didn't know what to say. Death was tearing me in the He said, I lift my hands up and say, Jesus, and suddenly the attack stopped. You are a product of your thought. It doesn't matter what people say to you, sir. What heaven we place a seal over is what you are saying. They tell you things will not work in this life and you stand before the Lord. I see things working. It is working. Lord, look at me. It is working. Lord, look at me. It is working. 
Doctor says it will not work. He said it will work. It will work. It will work. It will work. No, no, no. I will build that house. I will complete this project. Oh, no. I will come. You are thinking. You become your thoughts. You become what? Your thoughts. Dr. Mensah Otabe says, when you invest a thought, it becomes an action. When you invest a thought, so we can have investment of thoughts. When you invest a thought, it becomes an action. And anything is possible when your thought becomes pure. The Bible gave us an illustration in Genesis. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Genesis chapter 11. In Genesis chapter 11 from verse 3. The Bible says that, And they said one to another, Go to let us make bricks. Can you see these guys? And what? And burn them thoroughly. And they add bricks for stones, lime. Let's talk about beauty, man. Add day for mortar. And verse 4, the Bible says, And they said, Go to let us build us a city. Let us. There was a processing thought. A city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make a name for ourselves. Lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Let's go up to heaven now. The Bible says, give me the next verse. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower that which the children of men built. And verse 6, the Bible says, and the Lord said, behold, the people is one. Their thought is pure. They can achieve anything with good thoughts. Ah! He says, and they have all one language and this they begin to do. He said, now, nothing we what will be restrained from them. Which they have what? Imagine to do. Ah! He said, now, nothing. The power of thought. He said, nothing. 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 IWC was first processed in the heart. The journey was first processed in the heart. You must process a conception of light. You must process a glorious future. You must first of all see where you want your children to be in the future. In your thoughts. You must create your home from your thoughts. You create your life from your thoughts. From your thought, you must first say to yourself, I cannot be ridiculed. From your thought, you must say, I am not an agent of, of frustration. No, evil can't come near me. I'm in light. I stay in light, lighting the entire world. I'm a voice to reckon with your thoughts. Your thoughts. I will not fail. I will not give in. I will not submit. I will not put heaven to shame. Your thoughts. I will win. I will win. I will win. I will win. Some will say there is no land in my tama. Go to my tama now. There are plenty houses that is on for sale. And some will buy and just pull down the horrible house and bring glory. Your thought. When you ah, people have occupied this place when there's nothing here for anybody again. Who told you that? There is a root God who makes room for any thoughts. Let's use this one. The God who makes room for any thoughtable thought. He makes room for it. As you think you are. As you think you are. As you think you are. My daughters will be great. God said, hey, confirm his thoughts. I have a good future. My marriage will work. Prophecies come from the left, from the right, say it will not work. He said, in this I stand. It will work. She said, where you go, Naomi, I will go. 
I know. I don't need anybody to tell me I'm a widow. I don't need anybody to tell me my journey has ended. No. I see from my thoughts that one day your God will be my God. And your people, ah! somebody who just lost people, your people will be my people. And by thought, the salvation you and I are celebrating today came from her. Right and pure thoughts. The Bible says, nothing shall be restrained from them which they have imagined. The journey of every revival starts with right thoughts. Number two, what keeps you in a revival? Grow in knowledge. Growing in knowledge and have an understanding of his word. When you grow in knowledge and you have an understanding of his word, then you will learn to believe God for any and everything. Nobody just wake up and begin to believe God. You must be able to grow. Knowing what God, if you don't know what your helper is capable of doing, how do you suddenly believe him? If somebody just meets you on the way now and says, see, don't worry, young man, since we are working on this street together, tomorrow I will give you a billion dollar contract. And you don't know him. You don't know anything about him, sir. Something don't enter. He's mental. Are you following me right now? Uh-huh. Don't worry, tomorrow evening, see me, eh? I'll call the Minister of Finance and tell him to attend to you. you. Just look at him. You are weary. Whatever you don't know, you don't value. You don't. You must grow in knowledge and in the understanding of Him. Proverbs was speaking in Proverbs 17 27. He who has knowledge spell his words. And a man of understanding is of a calm spirit. It will help you. Understanding will help you to go far in life. But you must grow. You grow in it by studying to keep yourself approved. I've told you long ago. If what you still have in your hand is a borrowed Bible, it's not yours. Buy one with your money with your sweat. Don't hold on to the app. A time will come, the technology we celebrate today will fail. We will not be able to, size, to assess it. But when you have eaten this world so much, a time will come, you will even find Bible again. You must have eaten it and it is inscribed in your heart. Oh, they can take it away. But they can't steal it. And then you are in the cave. It's in the cave. It's in the cave. When you close your eyes like this, you begin to use stones to write the words of God out. <laughs> and generations will come back in the cave. When you hide in the cave to have fellowship, now you have fellowship here. Yeah, you guys are celebrating God. Some, if there is no AC, now this is stop working. So we will not continue. You know, last week I was in church. AC note was in work. I know the good church. I swear. It. <laughs> Choir worshiping. Said, no, no, they wait. They went off key. I don't even like today. Sunday, I watch from the house. Let me just see what they would do. Is it because gospel is still made easy for you now? A time is coming. There will be no instrument. We'll go back. We'll not be able because to place where we allot them, evil authority. You don't know the government is coming. It will allow them, but your heart, you grow in the knowledge of God so much that you know him and there is nothing happening to the left or the right that will discourage you about Christ. Get to a level that you don't make decision because somebody is telling you something. You make decision because you have found something about Christ. Grow. Grow. 
Prophets will pass away. Pastors will pass away, including myself. What will not leave you, sir, is this word. Look and leave my brother leave. Look. Just look to the word. Every time you set your eyes on this word, you live. In the beginning was the word. <laughs> and the word was with God. And the word is God. The same was in the beginning and all things were made by him. He said there was nothing made that was made. He became the light of man. And this light shines in darkness. And darkness comes. There is no revival, sir. Outside the knowledge and understanding of God's word. You don't know that you can pray and be frustrated. Papa. Baba, Baba, Baba. Then you start crying. Baba, Baba. When you find the word of God, my son, I am the Lord. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And you come to it, Baba. You who is the way, show your way now. You who is the truth, reveal your truth now. You who is the life, give life to what is dying. And the God says, heaven and earth shall pass away. But no iota of my word will go without fulfilling. Isaiah spoke the word, Isaiah 55, 11. He said, so it is. The rain that comes to the heaven and return not either. So is my word that has gone out of my mouth. It will not return to me back void, but accomplish the purpose therein. Which has been spoken of. The true revival, you stay in revival, you are kept revived by this. Don't let the devil take, you know, it was not speech to speech. When the devil met Christ, it was God's word to God's word. <laughs> The devil was quoting his own word and Jesus told him it is written. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. I am the Lord thy God. You must come to this understanding. Revelation. Every time the, Jesus wanted to frustrate the Pharisees, he would say, before your father Abraham I was. And the Bible said it, behold the lamb that was slain from the foundation. Abraham was not in the foundation. From the foundation, he said, I, before your father Abraham, I am. And look and say, I and the father are one. You must come up to be able to say, I know I'm Visayo, but I and the Lord are one. When you see me, you see God. He said, he said we are the ambassador of Christ here on earth. The ambassador is the nation. You, you, you're not getting what I'm saying? The ambassador. A, a governor is not a nation. He's a representative of a state. And a senator is not. The strongest office is the office of the ambassador. A slap on the ambassador of Nigeria to Togo is Togo slapping Nigeria. Imagine the Togo president slap the ambassador of America to you have slapped America. But you can slap the governor of Maryland, a state, and go free. You can slap an ambassador and go free. I am an ambassador of Christ. Number three. Thank you, Lord Jesus. She said, Thank you, Lord Jesus. Changing me and changing you. We have come with hope. So let the ancient world something happen in now. Touch me and me. 
touch me. He touch me. I know the joy that fills my soul. Something happened and now I know he touched me. What keeps you in a revival number three? Stay close to his touch. Stay close to his touch. Stay close, so close that it is either he's touching you or you are touching him. Just make sure there is a touch. Are you with me, sir? Stay close to a touch. You must stay close that you begin to enjoy true fellowship. The Bible gave us the story in Luke chapter 8 and verse 44. Luke 8, we'll take it from verse 43. Luke 8, 43 says, And now a woman having issue of blood which had spent all, everybody tell me all, all of our living upon physicians and neither could what? He be healed of any. She could not be healed of any. And he said, came behind him. She got to a level first that nobody could heal her. Her case became incurable because it is incurable when of doctors and physicians have tried your case. Oh, this problem you have brought here is bigger than this mountain. She went to all the mountains she knows. All the renowned prophets she knows. Nobody could save her. Ah! There was no time to stop Christ and call on his attention. Lord, Lord and there was no time to even communicate our problem to Christ. So instead of spending too much time trying to communicate my problem, let me just touch it. Stay closer to his touch. Make sure that you are here that touching him or he's touching you. Make sure that you stay close that his gospel can touch you. If his prayer can touch you, let his worship touch you. If nothing about the kingdom is touching you, let evangelism touch you. And if you don't like his touch via evangelism, get his touch by testimony. Just make sure by all means, you are very close to his touch. You are good. You are kind. I have never seen your kind. I'm devoted to your praise and forever to your The Bible says she came from behind. You know, the message translation said she steeped. She slipped in. You know what it is? She slipped in. It means to flow across. She just flew across. No. He, he, he's moving with the crowd. He's not ready to touch anybody. I must touch him. I, I must touch him. The kind of touch. You know what she did? She heaped all.
all of our problems in one word, touch. And Jesus somebody touch me. Who touched me? Because I don't care. There is so much crowd. He said, Peter, you are a dummy. I'm not talking about this kind of touch. There is a touch with a weight. There is a she put all her body. She, she sat down first. Okay. This emerald, this heart disease. Heart disease. You you will be handled today by touch. All of us be ready. Marital settlement. You will be handled today by a touch. Just be ready. She put all of the it's one touch, one touch. I'm telling all of you now before we leave. So that when we are coming back, we become whole. One touch. And you know what, sir? All of you, don't worry. I I I have asked about him of how anointed is this. He's very anointed that it overflow. And I remember in the days of Moses that the oil flew from Aaron and it gathered at the end. So I know where to get it. No matter how drenched you are inside the rain, you don't get the best of water from your head. Everything. Gather at the hem of your garment. So she went directly there. Touch. You want to stay in revival? Stay close to his touch. You make a mess of yourself now. We don't touch. Ah, a case was filled that it has a name issue. Our own blood case was called issue. She get issue for her life. Not in the walk. Tell yourself congratulations. It's just a touch. Someone say it. It's just a touch. My problem will go. Nobody spoke to her. Nobody ministered to her. Out of the 12 years, no priest went to her house. Ah! She never got angry with any of the priests. Yes, she was waiting for one day. A day of touch. A day of touch. This is your day. Yes. This is your day. Yes. Today, you will touch him or he will touch you. Yes. One of these we you will touch him or he will touch you <laughs> I said today is your day a ayakabara a touch is taking place now a divine touch is taking place now in the name of Jesus take your seat that single touch that will make the old world stand still and notice you. It's coming on you now. <laughs> they used to know her with the issue of blood. There's a touch that calls the attention of heaven. Heaven and earth stood still. Today, in the name of Jesus, you will get it. Can I say loud, Amen. I want you to know quickly that, that this is something this is staring inside of me. I can't help you, but there is a Christ who can help you. The God, the maker of the heavens and the earth. Somebody stand on your feet. Say, Jesus, I touch you. I touch you. I touch you for my settlement. I touch you for my liberty. I touch you. Come on, come on, come on. Stand up. I touch you for my healing, for the settlement. Of my children, I taught you, I taught you for my wife, Olubusala. I taught you, Lord, I taught you for my home, for my heart, for my future, for my assignment. I taught you, oh God of heaven, I taught you, Lord, notice me, Lord, notice me, Lord, notice me. I am touching you, I taught you now, I am touching you, I taught you for Lua Volajime. I taught you for Lualonimi. I taught you for Luataniola. I taught you for Lunati. I taught you in the name of Jesus. I am touching you, Lord. In Jesus, mighty name we pray. Listen to me. There is a touch that disappoints principalities and power. The powers 
that have held her bound for 12 years was this was this was this was touch she initiated her own revival by touch she was not part of the agenda she introduced an agenda into a divine agenda because they were going they were going on a divine agenda the chief in the land had called them come and attend to my daughter they were going hey, we have read the reports of our fathers of the things you've done how you revived the work in the midst of the year so she ran with that vision they said you will remember mess if there is no mercy, remember pity. And if not, consider love. Speak now. Consider love now. Consider pity now. I, I don't want it to. What I'm looking for. I don't want it to. But love, pity me. And give it to me. I don't deserve it. But pity me. Pity me, oh God. Pity me. Pity me. And give it to me. Love, pity me. Pity me, I ask Lord in your mercy. Pity me, give me access. Pity me, access, give me access. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. God bless you. Take your seat. So, on that case, she touched him. And there was another case. It was Jesus who needed to touch another woman. The Bible gave us the story of Jesus going into the house of Peter. And when he got to Peter's house, he met Peter's mother-in-law sick. Matthew chapter 8, verses 14 to 15. But so when he got into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother <laughs> laid and sick of fever. And in verse 15, the Bible says, and when he touched her hand, the Bible said the fever left. And what happened? She arose and what served? Not the people in the house served. There was an instant restoration. That the one that was sick just by a single touch start serving, start working, start engaging the best of life. Infirmity, disgrace, frustration, disgrace. One thing the devil can't take away from me, no matter what he does, he can't take away sound health. I saw it by his stripes. I am. The chastisement of my peace was upon him, and he himself took. He, he took. He didn't leave anything. I didn't give it to him. I didn't ask him to come. It pleased him. He came to me. He took away my infirmity. I don't even need to know whether it was with love. I don't need to ask questions. I don't need. To. I don't know what I do. I was born blind. I don't know. But now I can see. I, I don't know how. But the man told, told me that go now. Your sins have been forgiven. How does blindness and sin dance together? Because he was born blind. So he has not seen sin. So your sins are forgiven. And sight was restored. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? <laughs> Matchless love and beauty and less love. I know nothing in this world can satisfy because Jesus, you are the God that will in your presence. Your prayer, Lord, <laughs> is ever, ever to me. Oh, your presence. Your 
is touch grant you and I access to the supernatural is touch grant you and I access to the supernatural Revelation chapter 1 verse 12 to 19 I want to read it very fast is touch grant you access to the supernatural John was speaking say, and I turn to see the voice <clears throat> that speak with me and being torn, I saw seven golden candlesticks fast. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and guides about the gaps, perhaps with a golden guard. He had his ears were white like wool, and as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. The supernatural. Ooh. Ooh. And his feet like unto fine brass. And if they burned in a furnace. And his voice as the sound of many waters. Strange things. And he had in his right hand seven stars. Stays in his right hand. A touch from his right hand. Put a stamp of seven stars. And out of his mouth went what? A sharp two-edged sword. And his countenance was what? As the sun shined in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. Nothing was living. And what did he do? He laid his right hand with the stamp of seven star. He laid his right hand on me, saying unto me, Henceforth, fear not, for I am the first and the last. Ah, yeah, also. I am he that liveth. List of order, 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 order. Come, Binga, come. Go back to verse 16. The Bible, go back to verse 17. And he had in his right hand, and when I saw him, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as what has been dead. Go down. That has been that means I surrender everything, the one working and the one not working in my life. And then stay on the scripture. And he suddenly lay his right hand on me. That became a stamp of seven stars. And he began to say, Fear not, henceforth. What you fear, we start fearing you. What you fear, we start fearing you. As he put his hand, look at what he said. He says, I am. He held him the first and the last. And then he went on and said to him, I am he that liveth, so live. <laughs> and behold, I am alive forevermore. Live. Amen. And I have the key of hell and of death. In verse 19, he said to him, Write these things. Which thou hast seen, and this thing which thou hast heard, and the things which shall be thereafter. It grants you access to the supernatural. He won a money, lie He money, he won money. La ye loro we want the money thank you jesus jesus all i have is you all i have is you jesus number 4 don't lose mercy. No matter how horrible the world makes you feel, don't lose mercy. Don't take your eyes off mercy. Don't take your voice off mercy. Because we see mercy and we cry for mercy. Don't lose mercy. You know, he says, remember mercy. 
And he says, mercy prevails over judgment. Don't! Tap your neighbor say, don't lose mercy. Don't lose mercy. Say, tell them, don't lose mercy. Don't what and who we are is by the mercy of God. You know, Jesus made a profound statement. I will have mercy. Now listen. Salvation is a free gift for all. Mercy is not. He gives mercy to whom he pleases. You can be so righteous and not obtain mercy. That is, you live righteously, holy, you serve him, you do sanctification of the spirit, you speak in the Holy Ghost, you have the vision, you see the heavens, and you did not obtain the mercy for prosperity. No mercy for settlement, everything just died in penury. There was no mercy around Lazarus. He born a poor man, died as a poor man, went to heaven as a poor man, in heaven he became a slave. Even the, the stupid rich man was in hell, was still commanding him. He said, you are my boy now. I still recognize you, my boy. Hello, sir. Mercy, oh. Mercy. Who are mercy? I know you love anointing, you love power, but there is something greater than anointing and power. Mercy. Mercy makes you relevant. Mercy overrides error. Error. Mercy abolishes evil. Mercy is an ordinance of light. May I not be full of self. May I not get to a level where I think I don't need it. Lord, you know it. All of me ask and cry for mercy. Whatever you do, sir, don't lose mercy. You know, Bible says, it's a mercy and truth kiss themselves. Don't lose mercy. A cry for mercy will save you any day. Do you get that? The case, we saw that in the case of the blind Bartimaeus. Thou son of David. When you don't have prayer point, ask for mercy. I don't know, but just have mercy. Lord, just have mercy. David said, you know, you know what I love about David's own? Blind Bartimaeus cry for mercy. So have mercy. David said, your loving kindness and tender mercy. He, David had an adjectival phrase to mercy. He died. He said, this is one thing. He's so tender. I can't let anything take it away. You can take my soul, not mercy. Your tender mercy and when God said to him, Save me, since you call it tender, my loving kindness and tender mercy also, will I not utterly take away from you? And God said to him, I will build the throne of David forever. By mercy, sir. How do you kill a soldier who serve you righteously? Who did everything to make sure your throne is a good reign? That you are a king. The best of the soldier in the land. Just because you are his wife. You send him there to go and, there, and you told people to make sure he died. You, there was a penalty. David were to be hung and killed. Nathan asked him, what should we do? He said, the one who has done this thing, deserved death. Ah! And when judgment was pronounced, David said, I rather run to the hand of God. <laughs> Lord, don't let men kill you. When they kill me, I'm finished. But when you kill me, remember mercy. In killing, remember mercy. Cain killed Abel, but obtained mercy. And God put a seed. Anyone who killed Cain is in trouble. He said, he said Cain, you will wonder, but nobody will be able to kill you. And God said, the generation of Cain began to expand across the nation of the earth. Mercy. Anoni, 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 Jesus, Anoni, Shanomi, 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 Jesus, Shanomi. Mercy breaks protocol. 
it grants you access to any and everything. How do you explain the case of the thief on the cross? The other one said to him, I heard you are the Christ. Save yourself. The other one made his last request. Mercy. Please. And no sanctification, no consecration, no water baptism. They were together in paradise. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No confession of sin. There was no time to say, both of them were dying, including the Messiah. There was no time to say, Lord Jesus, I repent of all my sins. Forgive me of all my sins. Mercy collapsed time. When there is no time, mercy gives time. It beats time. Somebody stand on your feet. Cry for mercy. I won't stop you. Cry for mercy. Cry for mercy. Open your mouth. Aya. Open your mouth. Cry for mercy. Have mercy, Lord, on my soul. Have mercy, Lord. children. Have mercy. Open my womb. Have mercy. Give me health. Have mercy. Let my children be great. Have mercy. Let my Simon speak with resolve. Lord, have mercy. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. The thief was never religious. Jesus said to him, surely, that's in Luke 22, from, from verse 36 to 39. He said, surely, not tomorrow, me and you will eat. Listen, Lazarus never had the opportunity to eat with Christ. We didn't even see Father Abraham with Christ. We know he had a big mansion in heaven. I said today, me and you, who will whine in paradise. Mercy. Mercy. When they stare on you and say you don't deserve it, what speaks and singles you out is mercy. There is nothing that we have or have seen that we walked for. Mercy brought it here. It was mercy that decided we should be the one that this land is given to. It's not prayer. It's not work. The one who got the job is not because there was different prayer point or laying of tummy. It is mercy that gives answer. He said the Lord will arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her has come. When mercy is speaking, it is time. When mercy speaks, time for marriage, time for settlement, everything will just fall in place. You say, but when on a meet, you and this guy say, you know, tell me. I say, I don't know. We just meet to marriage just come. Mercy. Mercy makes you sleep very hungry. Last night, wake up the morning and you become millionaire. Mercy connects you, puts you among and before kings. 
Merci. I won't let go. I won't let go. Jesus took me by the hand. I won't let go. I won't let go. I won't let go. Jesus took me by the hand. Take your seat. I'll tell you one more thing. I'll finish the rest on Tuesday. But I just need to tell you this one. What keeps you in revival? The fear of God. The fear of God must be your priceless asset. If you fear God, you will honor God and honor everything about God. You must have the fear of God above everything. In fact, the Bible says that the secret of God is with them that fear him. Psalms 25 and verse 40. He said, the secret of the Lord is with those that fear him. The secret. You are looking for wealth. It has a secret. It is upon those people who fear God. And God will begin to teach them a little here, a little there. Not in stealing. The fear of God. I saw this early. Fear me, no matter how foolish you are or you become, fear him. Every time you've done something wrong, what pricks your heart? Is the fear of God. God put that consciousness. But some people don't even have nothing pricks them at all. If you fear God, you will respect and honor grace. The Bible gave account of Timothy. He was 17 years old when he began to pastor the church of Ephesus. He was not married. He was their pastor. Everybody honor him. Everybody respect him. He would stand before them and say to them, a workman who needed not to be ashamed but rightly dividing the word of truth. Say study. He was passing instruction to the old church. They were following him. If you fear God and you are not ready to embrace his instruction, it means you don't fear God. If you fear God, it will show on how you embrace his instruction. You're dealing with people. Fear God. Before you say something audible about the unction and the anointing, fear God. Before you despise grace, fear God. He will show you his secret. To fear God means to reference him. That is, do it as unto the Lord. It means you fear God. Do it as unto the Lord. Let everything about you honor him. Fear God, sir. Fear God. Fear God. Stand on your feet. I want you to say, Lord, put your hand on me. Put your hand on me and let it stay. <laughs> Make sure you are talking to him more. Put your hand on me and let it stay. Put your hand on me and let it stay. Lord, let it stay. Put it, keep it. Put your hand on me and let it stay. Lord Jesus, put your hand on me. Let it stay. Holy Ghost. Put your hand on me. Let it stay. Lord, let it stay. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. You see, from the teaching of today, I've given you plenty of prayer points. 
and you know what to pray rightly so you don't pray amiss if all you do this week is Lord put your hand and let it stay if all you do this week is Lord just show me mercy everywhere I go so that things will work Lord I need your touch just touch me with this contract touch me with this good health touch me with this blessing wherever you are you don't know Jesus you are in all any of the overflows you've not encountered him I want to give you the privilege to lift your hands and surrender to Jesus until you know him there is no life I surrender all or you want to rededicate your life just lift it up there must be a connection between you and your maker Surrender everything to Jesus. And everything I give. Everything I give to you. Father, today we withhold nothing. And we ask you to take control. Let every life surrendering to you now be accepted. Give them a new life. Give them a new heart. Make them your own and reserve a place in eternity. Let them reign with you forever in paradise. Save them completely. Forgive their sins. And write their name in the book of life. We'll embrace grace. We'll embrace light. For Jesus has settled us. Amen.